Hey guys, in this week's video I want to run you through five things you probably didn't know about electronic dance music. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first thing is, the intro and the outro drums of electronic dance music are not actually for you, they're for the DJs. So. If you go and listen to any of your favourite music by Martin Garrix, Oliver Heldon, David Guetta, any of these guys, you'll often find that the beginning and the end of the song, there's just a drum loop running, as in it's just a, a beat you're listening to. Often sounds a little bit like this. And that will run for a bit before the song actually starts. And you're thinking like, why didn't they just start the song there where the singing started or where the main bit of the song started? Well, the truth is, these drum beats are put in for DJs when they're performing. If you think about it, when you go and see a DJ, they need to kind of blend between the two songs. And if most songs just started with singing and ended with singing, how would the DJs be able to mix the two tracks? So, all producers like Martin Garrix, David Guetta, Tiesto, all these guys, will put about 16 bars or just, you know, a couple of seconds of beat at the beginning and the end of every song. So other DJs and them have a good way to mix the two tracks for their audience to listen to in like a nice smooth way. So that's the first thing you probably didn't know. So the second thing you probably didn't realize about EDM music is the thing that you're usually dancing to is the drum and the bass line. You're usually not dancing to anything but that. To explain this to you, I wanted to jump on this program here called Ableton. This is a program people use to make dance music. People like Skrillex, Tiesto, Marshmallow, they all use this program here. And all I want you to look at is this effect here, which is a spectrum analyzer. If I press play on the song, you're gonna see loads of lines appearing. Have a look. And it shows you all the different frequencies that are playing of the song that I have playing, right? Now, this thing here allows me to cut out frequencies that I don't wanna to listen to. So we're now only gonna to listen to frequencies down here, which is the bass frequencies. Now, I have to tell you, if you're listening to uh, this on little tiny speakers like this, or on a laptop, or off your phone, you probably might struggle to hear these. So this is the bass frequencies. And if I grab this and move it up, you'll listen to the mid frequencies. And if I move it up again, you'll listen to all the high frequencies. Now, the truth is, when you are listening to dance music or dancing to dance music, the only bit of the song you're really dancing to is down here. If you think about it, if you were to put on your favorite song now and just have a dance to it, you probably find the thing you are dancing to is the drum beat. So, I'm just gonna play this little bit down here and you're gonna hear there's a kind of beat and you're gonna hear the beat and you're gonna hear the drum. This is the bit you would be dancing to if this was playing out loud in a club or in a festival. Now, all the other frequencies obviously support the drum and the bass, but those are the things that you are dancing to, which is one of the reasons I think electronic dance music is so popular, because it takes that and it pushes it to the extreme. All of your favorite tracks will have a really loud, prominent drum and bass line going on, and that's why I think people just love dance music so much. So, point number two leads me quite nicely into point number three, which is a little trick that producers like Skrillex, Marshmallow, Martin Garrix all use to make their kick drum, the drum beat, stand out even more in the world that we currently live in. So what do I mean by this? As I just mentioned, most people listen to their music on tiny little speakers like this or out of their laptop. If you guys think about it, you probably listen to music most of the time out of tiny little speakers like this, which means you're not gonna have a full frequency range like the one I just demonstrated to you. The truth is, if you're listening to music on things like this, you're not gonna be hearing anything below here. So there's a lot of the kind of sub frequencies you're not gonna hear. So the music would sound more like this. than it would like this. Because these things, in order to get the bass sound, you've got to have quite a big kind of speaker pushing out the bass, bass frequencies. You're not going to get it with these tiny little things here. So, what producers have to do these days is find little hacks to make their drums sound even louder when you guys aren't going to be hearing most of the sub. So, I'm going to jump back onto this project here 
And I'm gonna go to my lane that's just got the kick drum on it, which is this lane here. So if I was to just solo this track, you just hear the kick drum. Now, what most producers have to do these days is they actually have to go in and boost the high end of the kick drum. Now, I want you to notice this. I'm gonna bring this down, and I'm actually gonna bring just the volume of the higher frequencies up. And I want you to notice how much punchier this kick drum sounds when all I'm really doing is changing the higher frequencies. So have a listen. You hear that little snap there? That little snap is used to really make kick drums stand out when you're listening to the music on much smaller speakers. So the next tip I wanted to tell you about is what I refer to as the volume hit. So any bass head, any EDM lover out there will know that the part of the song that everybody goes crazy for is the drop. This is where the bass hits, the kick drum starts kicking, and this is the bit where everybody goes absolutely crazy. Now, producers and DJs know that this is the bit that everybody loves, where suddenly everything comes in and it seems really loud. So they will do things to make this part of the song seem even louder. And the way they do it is coming up to the drop they'll actually turn the volume down. So when the drop hits, they'll turn the volume back up and it'll make it seem even louder. Now, as somebody just listening to EDM music, you won't really be aware of it because it's done so subtly. You won't go, oh, why is it gone all quiet? It will be getting quieter though. So when that drop comes back, it seems ridiculously loud. I'm just gonna jump on this program here again. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so. Here we go, you can see, this is the part of the song here. I've got a little sign up here to say where the drop is. And if you just listen to this, it's gonna build and then drop. You but what you can do is you can get like a volume thing like this, which looks like this. And what you can do is over time, you just gradually would make it quieter and quieter. Now the volume is gonna follow this line. It's gonna turn down, it's gonna turn down and turn down. And then at the last minute, it's gonna turn back up. If you listen to it, you're gonna notice that it actually gets quieter and quieter and then jumps back up for the drop. You so there's another little trick that DJs and producers are doing into fooling you that the drop is hitting even harder than it actually is just by automating the volume. The final thing I wanted to tell you about was the secret of adding tension to these EDM tracks. If you think about it, all music is a series of builds and drops like adding tension and releasing tension. And the thing that I love about electronic dance music is it takes this to the extreme. You get these huge builds and huge drops. And there's certain things that all DJs and producers know that they can do to add even more tension to the songs that we are listening to. And I wanted to tell you about it now so you're aware of it when you listen to music moving forward. So, as we already know from previous things I've said in this video, a drop is all about the kick and the bass. So to make that seem even heavier, what they do is on the build, they'll remove the kick and they'll remove any bass. So it'll get thinner and thinner and less and less bass. And then when the bass comes in, it'll feel like there's tons of bass. But all it is, is that before it, they've taken it all away. The other thing they do is they'll use repetition. So they'll, uh, which I'm, give you, I'm gonna give you an example of now. And they also use pitch risers. So things that kind of go, because when things are getting higher and higher and higher and repeating and repeating, it adds a huge amount of tension to a track. So I'm gonna jump back on this program here. I'm gonna go to the part of the song which is building. This is a track I did, it's an Alan Walker remix. You can check it out on my channel or you check it out up here. Right, now on the build, what I did was I used repetition, I used pitch risers and I got rid of all the bass. So one of the elements is a snare roll. Remember what I said about repetition? And I also took a bit of the, uh, the singing and I kind of repeated it over and over. Have a listen. Me, 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 and it'll start me, to pitch up. You notice how it went up and up and up? So just using these simple techniques, you can add a huge amount of tension to a song. Now, as for the bass and removing the bass and bringing the bass back in, I'm gonna open up this thing again, this Spectrum Analyzer, 
We're gonna listen to the build, and what I want you guys to do is just look at this. Now remember, remember I said that all the bass frequencies were down here. You'll notice that as this song builds and builds and builds, there'll be less and less bass frequencies. Then when it drops, you'll see loads of movement down at this end. This is a really kind of interesting visual way for you guys to see how producers and DJs will use these tricks to add huge amount of tension and release to the songs that they're playing. Have a listen. Do you see how the bass, you could hear it, it wasn't just dropping away, it was visually moving away. And then when the drop hit, you saw this huge spike where the bass was. So there you go guys, there's five things you probably didn't know about electronic dance music. And guys, I wanted to finish off this video with a bit of a discussion. I want to know if you guys are the same as me. You see, when I listen to music, 90% of the time I'm listening to it off my phone or off little tiny speakers like this. Which is frustrating because I know as a producer and as a DJ, there's so many frequencies that these things don't allow you to hear. Now, even though I have got good headphones like this, sometimes it's just a bit more of a palaver having to wear these things around your head or around your neck, when these things are so much easier. And I wanted to know if you guys are the same as me. Even though you're aware, or maybe you weren't aware, that these things don't give you the full frequency response as I explained in this video, I still find myself wearing these all the time. Are you guys the same? Leave a comment below and tell me what you listen to your music on 90% of the time. Is it a big professional sound system or big expensive headphones? Or do you guys find yourself just listening to stuff off your phone or off these? Like guys, if I'm getting ready to go out, sometimes I'll just put my phone on the side of my cupboard and I'll listen to music off my phone while I'm getting ready. And I wanted to know, are you guys the same? So leave a comment and let me know if you are. Guys, that's the end of this week's video. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more videos just like this, hit this button here to subscribe to my channel right now. If you guys are brand new to DJing and you want to see some free DJ training, go to my website by hitting that button down there. And finally guys, if you want to see my full Alan Walker remix, hit the button below. I'll see you guys next week. Ciao. Boof.